Well, we are in Davos because we got a clear message. We think that the executive boards need to sharpen up. We don't think boards do enough on the climate side. Only 17% of companies that we are invested in actually have a clear uh, uh, climate plan. We are here to also uh, say more about executive pay. We think executive pay is too high. And we think also boards do not a good enough job on div diversity at the board level. What do you want them to do on climate diversity that they're not doing at the moment? Because every company that comes my way has an entire raft of policies and documents and, and what, what, what they're up Well, to. the problem is that they haven't, right? Because, uh, as I said, only 17% of companies have a clear climate strategy. That's not very much. Uh, we also think that executive pay is too high. You know, in 2021, executive pay up 15%, 15% in a year where there is a living crisis. We just don't think that makes a lot of sense. It's worse in the US than elsewhere? Yes. What are you seeing at the moment when you look at markets. We've had very difficult six months to nine months, and people say it's going to be a trading sideways for the rest of the year. Well, what I, th I think we have much more difficult outcomes than we've had historically. So normally when I go into a year, I think it's very clear which direction it has. This year, I think it could either go well or it could also go really badly. And I think the reason why it could go badly would be if the uh, kind of the kickoff again in China spurs inflation in Europe and in America. If that happens and we get a re-acceleration of inflation, really bad for markets. Now, you've pinned that on China, say, for, but of course, you have the exogenous possibility from Russia, something coming out of there, something coming out from the Ukraine crisis, which could also push up energy prices. I see that as a double uh, negative, if you will, uh, in a sense for yourself, because that will obviously have one effect, but it could also have a bad effect for companies that you've invested in. Well, you, you can have a lot of um, surprising elements here. You could have uh, geopolitical events, uh, many places. Uh, and it's always the unexpected which uh, takes us by surprise. If we take a look at interest rates and how they've risen yeah. dramatically, I mean, any of us who have been doing this for a few years, you normally see the sort of, they go up like that in a tightening cycle. This has gone like straight up. Yeah. Do you see that? Do you see further rate rises to come? And do you see... Uh, or are we close to the peak? Well, I normally don't say too much about inflation, but I do. there is a risk that inflation will be more difficult to get down than what is generally expected. There is a, there is a clear risk for that. There is a risk that it will be impacted by what's going on in China. Uh, and so they, they just could be difficult to get down. Come over to the worry wall. Right. What, what are you most worried about at the moment? What gives you greatest... Well, that's obviously the threat to democracy. Well, you know, I, th I think the biggest... Um, <laughs> well, these are all worries. I think the biggest surprise, which would be good for the economy but bad for markets, will be if the Chinese reopening caused uh, really, really strong inflation. That would be negative. As China reopens, it's almost a certainty that there's going to be some form of exporting of inflation, simply because the demand for uh, energy, the demand for uh, labor, everything is going to start hypering up. Absolutely. So, you know, um, the Chinese have spent, have not spent money for a long time. Mm -hmm. They've been spending time, uh, you know, unfortunately, in the living rooms. There is a lot of pent up potential spending to come. And there are no shortage of worries here in Davos, as you can see. The worry board will count them all up and give you an idea of where we stand. And the snow is really bucketing it down now. It's